Hi everyone, thanks for watching. This is Tim Clapham from hellolux.com and what I'm going to show you here is a really handy tip for uh, creating proxies to work with instances. Now this can actually really speed up your editor in Cinema 4D and it will make your workflow much smoother. It's pretty simple, it involves some user data and some espresso. And this tip that I'm showing you is uh, taken from uh, my Dynamics training which you can um, purchase um, and if you want to check that out, go over to lux.tv forward slash dynamic. And that will take you to the hellolux.com website um, where you can actually uh, check out all the content and, of course, purchase this if you'd like to. Uh, so let's jump over to Cinema 4D. I'm just going to build this from scratch pretty quickly. Um, it's quite quick to set up, but once you've set this up, you can build yourself um, a library item and then use it in all your scenes and hopefully that will help speed up your workflow. So the whole point of using um, this setup is so that you can actually um, work with a low detail, low polygon count object um, and you can use this for calculating things like a dynamic simulation when you've got hundreds of objects and then when it comes to render time you can switch that out for your highly detailed high polygon count model. Um, if you try and run a dynamic simulation on a model that is highly detailed, you'll probably find that the editor will come to um, a total crawl and become really slow, um, especially when you're dealing with hundreds or thousands of objects. Um, and you can create this setup and then save it um, in your library and use that in future scenes. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to work with um, a simple cube. Um, but obviously uh, this will work with any object. I'm just going to use a cube because I can quickly increase the segments and demonstrate the principle quite easily. Now I've got the cube in my scene. I'm going to um, add that into a cloner object. and Let's set this cloner object to be a grid array. Let's set the count to be 5x5x5 five by five by five, so we've got a fair amount. And I'm going to set the size to be uh, 1000 on all three axes. I'm also going to add in a floor object and let's just select the cloner, switch to our side view we just zoom out a little bit and we just pull this up above um, the floor like so I'm also going to kind of just rotate it around uh, something like so so if we just pull out so we can see what's going on let's just set that at some kind of random angle and I'm going to select the cloner, come to tags, dynamics tags and add a dynamics body tags under collision let's set that to all uh, for individual elements and let's select our floor and also add a dynamics body tag to this and that will create a collision object so we create a really simple dynamic setup and if we press play you can see that it drops down and all the cubes act in a dynamic way now I'm actually rendering in the background so it is a little bit slow um, but you can see that we're still getting um, a reasonable playback speed and we can see what's going on well enough to work. If we however take our cube and set our segments up to say 30 by 30 um, so now that we have um, a kind of really dense mesh if we press play now you can see it really does struggle that it's gone to a box view um, almost immediately and everything's really slow uh, let's just give it a little bit more of a chance and set that to say 20 now if we press play you can see that we're still keeping our shaded view but everything has slowed down considerably and of course uh, you're going to have a lot more polygons on um, a highly detailed model say a car or um, something like that now to fix this I'm going to use an instance object um, but first of all let's take this cube out of our cloner and let's call this high and let's just control drag to create a duplicate and let's call this one low and for the low cube I'm just going to set the segments to be one so now we have two different objects and let's just select both of those switch to coordinates and uh, reset these just to zero you don't need to do that but it just keeps them all in one place so what I want to do now is add in an instance object and reference these two and an give myself a little switch so I can switch between the two so let's just add an instance object first of all you can see that the icon has a little cross there which means that it doesn't actually have any object in its reference object so what we want to do is we want to put our low object in there um, while we run our simulation then at render time we want to put our high object in there 
If we put our instance object into the cloner, you can see that we get a very similar result as before. Now we don't actually want to see these reference objects, so let's add in a null and just call these uh, instance originals or something like so. We can then just hide that and we can select both of our objects and drop them in there. And you can't actually hide the objects themselves because if you do that, they'll hide in the instance. Next thing I'm going to do is create some uh, user data and I'm going to place this on the instance object. Now, uh, in a lot of your scenes, you may want to um, place this just on a null and use it to control all the instances in your scene because you may have more than one, but I'm just going to do it on one object for this example. Um, let's come up to user data, choose add user data, and first of all, let's call this switch and we're going to just create a simple boolean which is a checkbox and we're going to use that to switch between our high and low versions. Next we add some more data and we can call this high or something similar and the data type for this is a link because we want to link an object through this field. Okay and then we just add another data type here and we call this low and again we want this to be a link field. And that's all we need to do. So if we click OK, you can see now we have user data, and we have switch, and we have high and low. If you don't want to call that user data and you want to call it something a bit more sensible, um, you can come back into your manage user data. We can add a group here, and let's call this proxy switch. And if we take all of our user data elements, drag them into this proxy switch, and then if we drag that out of the user data tree, so like so, when we click OK, we now have proxy switch at the top here. So you can create these tabs um, within your user data elements. So now we've got these, what we need to do is link them up um, so that these elements that we choose to drag in here link through to our reference object here. Let's just clear that for now. So now you can see our instance isn't actually linking to any reference object. With the instance selected, choose tags, cinema 4D tags, come down, and add an Espresso tag. This will open the Espresso window and here we can um, create a few nodes. And the first one we're going to do is uh, drag the instance object into this Espresso window. On the output ports, come down to where it says proxy switch. Let's just move this up so you can see the capture area a little bit more clearly. So proxy switch or user data if you haven't renamed that and let's output the switch and then let's come down and choose our low version and then come down and choose our high version. So this is going to output the state of this user data. Uh, so the switch will output a positive or negative or a zero or a one and then the low and high will output whatever objects we drag into here. So if we drag our cube into low and we drag our high cube into high that's what will be output from these ports. So now we want to drag our instance object into here once again, and this time we want to input these values, and we want to input them into our object's properties reference object, because the reference object is this slot here, and that's the object that will be used by the instance when it generates geometry. So now what we need to do is just add one more node in between that will look at this switch and depending on the value of the switch it will output either the low or the high objects. To do this we add what's called a condition node. In the Espresso window right click choose new node Espresso logic condition and a condition node will basically look at the condition of the switch and depending on that value, it will output um, any of these inputs. Now, you can actually add more inputs, um, but if you've only got two in there, it will be based on a Boolean, so it will be 0 or 1. Um, but you could use a kind of pop-up menu um, and output different values, um, and you can use this in many different ways. So what we're going to do is take our switch value, drop it onto this input, which is also called switch, and then we're going to take our low, drag it to the first connection, and then high and drag it to the second connection. Now you can see we've already got a problem, it's not letting us connect these values. Now the reason for that is because our data types do not match. And if you remember when we created the user data, we created these as links, and if we roll over it, you can see down here in the bottom um, that it says it's outputting a link. Now the input here, if we roll over, is actually a real. 
So we need to make sure that our condition node is working with the right data type. So select the condition node, come up to the attribute manager and where it says data type, change that from real and we just change that to link. Now we can just drag our low and our high to the first and second input ports. Next, we can take the output and we can drag that to our reference object. You can see immediately in the uh, editor view that we now have some geometry showing up. If we select the instance object and come to the proxy switch, in fact, let's just drag across these so we can see both. You can see that the switch is currently disabled. So it's actually going to uh, take the low input because that's the first one here. So it's taking our low object and it's placing that into the reference object. Now, if we enable the switch, what will happen is it will then take the high object and it will place that in there. So we can just click switch and you can see that that changes to high. Now we can't see any difference here, but if I actually select the cloner itself, you can see uh, the switch has indeed take pla taken place. Uh, so we've got all that geometry there. Let's come back and just switch that back to the low version, select the cloner and there you go, you can see. So it's as simple as that really. So this basic setup allows us to switch the geometry nice and easy. Now, in this basic setup, we've only got one instance object, so it's pretty simple to just switch the reference object anyway. But if you've got lots of these, you can set up this global switch nice and simple. Um, you can have a kind of a iterator of some kind to iterate either through a hierarchy or an object list, and you can then use that to uh, become into this instance node, and then you can switch lots of them at once. The other thing that you can do is you can actually uh, bake or cache your dynamics using the low res version and then switch it out and render with the high res version. And here's a quick example of how you can do that. So if we just select our cloner, switch to our dynamics tag, and then just let's click bake. Bakes it nice and quickly. So you can see that we now have a, a working solution. I can scrub backwards and forwards. We can then select the instance, switch to the high res version, and um, everything is still baked. And of course, if we select our clone, you can see that we're working with the high res geometry. And um, we can even come to our high res version and then enable a fillet, for instance, and you can see that now all of our cubes have a fillet. But we've actually baked and cached that using um, the low res version. As you can see, it's a really simple setup, um, but very effective, and it will allow you to um, work with highly detailed models by just replacing them with a kind of simple low-res proxy that you can build really quickly, calculate all of your simulations, etc., and then switch it out. So I hope you found that useful and enjoyed that quick tip. Um, and if you did, please head on over to hellolux.com. Um, to check out some more of my tips and tricks for Cinema 4D and also uh, there's a few there for After Effects. And if you get a chance, check out the Learn Dynamics training that I offer, which is over 10 hours of training. And this is just one small tip that you find in that collection. So that's me, Tim Clapham from hellolux.com and uh, thanks very much for watching. See you all next time. Cheers.